In the previous segment, we addressed the legal framework that applied to the conduct of cyber operations that covered the range of interferences from violations of sovereignty and unlawful intervention through to an armed attack. Our focus was on the law relating to the use of force under the UN Charter and accompanying customary international law. In this segment, we will address the law applicable to cyber operations that occurred during a time of armed conflict, hence international humanitarian law, otherwise known as the law of armed conflict or the jus in bello, is the governing regime. This is an appropriate time to address this issue as countries are starting to acknowledge that they do possess an offensive cyber capability, that such means and methods of warfare would undoubtedly apply during an armed conflict. The US does actually have within its military structure a cyber command. And also recently, China also acknowledged that it too has a cyber war strategy and specialised units for waging war on computer networks. While international humanitarian law was designed with kinetic force as the reference, hence the firing of weapons and the physical effects of such weapons, it doesn't mean that it can't be adopted to apply to cyber means and methods. Indeed, the International Court of Justice in the famous Nuclear Weapons Advisory Opinion made it plain that emerging technologies were always subject to the applicable law in this area. On the whole, the drafters of the Tallinn Manual were able to apply existing rules and standards under international humanitarian law to the cyber sphere. Despite this key acknowledgement, there are some important aspects of IHL that don't seem to fit too readily to the phenomenon of using cyber means to undertake wartime operations that we should consider. One such area is the central question of the definition of attack. Under Article 49 of Additional Protocol 1, attack is defined as acts of violence against the adversary, whether in offence or defence. This is a central question because if I mount an attack, then I am subject to numerous rules about who or what I can attack, what level of incidental civilian loss I must take into account, and the amount of extra care that I must exercise as to reducing anticipated civilian losses to the lowest level possible. Hence, if I am not mounting an attack, as lawfully understood, then I am not so subject to such exacting rules, at least in relation to the law of armed conflict. So, so the question becomes whether the use of ones and zeros through cyber means can amount to an act of violence under additional protocol one or supporting customary international law, thus triggering my requirement to comply with a number of IHL rules. This issue caused considerable debate during the Tallinn process. Let's hear what Professor Schmidt has to say on this question and the outcomes reached. Why can't I conduct a psychological operation that intrudes into civilian systems and says, let's end the war now? This is an unreasonable war. Uh, classic cyber. So we said it, 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 it can't possibly be any operation directed at the civilian population. That can't be an attack. What we eventually came up with was a, a definition of attack for the purpose of all these prohibitions, attack, military objectives, etc. Uh, you can't attack anything other than military objectives. A definition that said we all agree it's death, injury, damage, or destruction. If, if, if a cyber operation does one of those four things, you're there. And then through a torturous three-year process of thinking through this, we also came up with the notion that if a cyber operation affects the functionality of a tangible thing, then that too was an attack. So let me give you the simplest example. I have a lap laptop. I really don't care if you strike my laptop with a hammer or drop a bomb on it or conduct a cyber operation against it that means it doesn't work anymore. All I know is I now have an inanimate, tangible object that only holds paper down. That's all it's good for. So this convinced us that attack includes not merely physical damage, but damage that affected the functionality of an object in some serious way.